Hello and welcome to my vlog Crafting with Shutter Monkey. I'm Amanda, also known as Shutter Monkey, and I live in Ayrshire in the west coast of Scotland. Other places that you can find me online are Ravelry, Shutter Monkey Designs, and Love Crafts, I'm Shutter Monkey Designs too. That's where I sell my knitting and my crochet patterns. Um, you can also find me on Etsy, Shutter Monkey Designs again. That's where I sell any handmade items that I have to sell. You can find me on Payhip, Shutter Monkey Designs again. That's where I upload any fabric requirements that you'll need to do any of my patchwork and quilting tutorials. And one of the other places you can find me online is Instagram. I'm we Shutter Monkey over there. I haven't been on social media a lot really the past month or so. I just find it's really, I don't know, just getting bombarded constantly with stuff, people selling stuff or I signed up for Instagram for the pretty pictures, no, for to get constantly harangued into buying something and it's not the, not the accounts that I follow because if you're a yarn dyer or you're making stuff and selling it, I choose to follow you, it's all the adverts you get and I've actually been counting as I'm scrolling through Instagram and it's like every fourth or fifth post that I'm seeing is an advert, it's just ridiculous and it's kind of really annoying me so I've not been on there a lot recently. Anyway, moan over. Today is Friday the 30th of April. I'm finding it hard to believe it's the end of April already. On the one hand it feels like you've been so restricted and you can't do anything or go anywhere but then on the other hand the year's just flying by and we're in the end of April already. So what have you been up to since we last vlogged? Your restrictions have probably been lifted the same as they have been here a wee bit which has been quite nice. I've still not been to the beach. I've still to do that. Our restrictions, we're allowed to travel now to all over Scotland so we were restricted to stay in our own, our own local authority but three weeks ago they lifted that and I didn't go to the beach because I thought well if you've not seen family members for months the first thing you're going to do is meet up with family for other areas and where are you going to go when you can't be indoors? You're going to go to the park or the beach and it has been quite busy because anybody that I follow online that has been to a beach has said it's quite busy, half of the west coast of Scotland's there so um, I'm waiting a wee while, let it calm down our non-essential shops only opened up on Monday. Just a few days ago they opened up, so the beaches may be quieter now. Maybe I could get there now. Anyway, enough jibber-jabber. Let's move on to the knitting section. And, as usual, I'll start with socks. So I think the last time I vlogged I was working on these ones still. The yellow brick road. They're quite bright, aren't they? They were even brighter last time because I think I slightly overexposed it. So I've got two now. Wait till you see this. Got a foot. I found a foot online for putting my socks on. <laughs> I think I'll call this foot Kevin because he's a bit footloose. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, that's the second one. So I've got two of them done now. So they're all finished and I will be releasing this pattern soon. But I've got another yellow brick road sock that I want to share with you. So I'll just put Kevin down, make sure he doesn't fall over. There we go. This is another yellow brick road sock that I'm working on. You can see the difference in the two colours. This is a yarn dyer called Carm of Kernel Designs and she contacted me and asked me would I be interested in working on a little collaboration with her. So this is her yarn and it's called Yellow Brick Road. You can, it's difficult to see it in the pattern sometimes, but you can see down at the bottom here, the stocking stitch part. You can see the lovely colouring through the yarn, can't you? And it's been a really, really nice yarn to knit with. It's a wee bit plumper than this other one. That one was quite fine. This one is nice and plump and it's been really nice to knit with. I'm really pleased with how that turned out because I'm not somebody who likes doing the same thing over and over again. So I was a wee bit daunted by that, but I've really enjoyed knitting on this one. And I have got the second one here. Oh, I'll just pop this open. Yeah, there we go. Oh, dropping a needle. There we go. I'm just past the, the, the heel turn. No, actually, I'm just past the gusset decreases. I've done my gusset decreases. So I'm going to sit and go do this this afternoon. I'm going to work in the foot this afternoon. Um, I think I'm going to put the Wizard of Oz on because I've not watched that yet while I'm knitting these socks. Not even when I did the first pair. 
and I'm getting close to the end. I've only got about two and a half, three hours worth of knitting to do. So that I think that might just work in quite nice with the film. When I started knitting this second one, I don't normally do this, but when I started knitting this pair with, with Kernel Designs yarn, I started writing down the times that it's taken me to do each bit of the sock. I was just interested in how long it takes me to knit a sock. Um, and I'm about an hour for the casting on and doing the cuff, I'm about an hour. To do the heel flap and the heel turn and pick up my gusset stitches, I'm about an hour for that. My toe, I think it was 50 minutes. Um, and the rest of it, I'm about an hour and a half. So I split my leg into two sections and I'm about, I'm about an hour and a half each day doing that. The gusset decreases, I was an hour and a half. And then the foot as well, I was about two days at an hour and a half. So I split it up over eight days. So it was, the first day was the cuff. The leg I did over two days. The heel turn, uh, sorry, the heel flap, the heel turn and picking up my gusset stitches was day four. Did the gusset decreases in day five. Six and seven were the foot. And then I did the toe. And it's actually a really nice way to do it because you feel like that you knit the sock really, although it's taken you eight days to do it, you're only working on it for an hour or an hour and a half each day. And it felt like it, a week had passed and all of a sudden this sock was done. But I've, I've been timing this one as well and my times are roughly the same. So I know I've got about two and a half hours, three hours and the foot will be finished and then it's just the toe after that. So I really need to watch that film if I'm going to do it while I knit those socks. So that might be a wee job for today. Not much a job, is it? It's such a chore having to sit and knit and watch a film. But that's my, that's maybe what I'll do this afternoon. Now see, when I knitted these ones, I've actually got some new needles here. Have I got the packet? I'll show you the packet. Now it's L-Y-K-K-E. I'm not, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but these are wooden needles. Driftwood wooden needles. And they're the 2.25s again. I'll show you a couple of the needles that I'm, I'm not using just now. But I really like knitting with wooden needles. That is, if you ask me what needles I prefer to knit with, although I knit with the Knit Pro Zings quite a lot and the Knit Pro Carbons, when I'm working with double pointed needles, it is the, the wooden ones that I prefer. And these have been really nice to knit with. The only thing is they're a wee bit flexible, a wee tiny bit flexible actually. They're not really bendy or anything. And when you're holding really tight, maybe doing your cast on, I found them, they bent a wee bit and I was a bit worried about that, but they've been fine after that. I think it's just if you're used to, for so long I've been knitting with the metal needles and they don't have any flex in them, but these ones do. There's that, just that wee bit of flex. But I've really, really enjoyed knitting with these. 2.25 millimeter again, but the original Yellow Brick Road ones I knitted using the Knit Pro Zings. But these ones, I'm using these, I don't know, Luca, Leica, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Somebody can tell me, correct me. But they have, they've been really, really nice and I've enjoyed knitting with them. I just thought I would try out some different needles. Although I've got the ones that I like to knit with, it's it's nice to try something new, isn't it? So I'm going to pop those away out of the way. And I've got plenty of this yarn left in here to finish that second sock and I'll have plenty left over. But I'll maybe be popping that into a wee giveaway um, and I'll tell you about that in a wee bit. Right, let me just put these socks away. What have I done with my DPN cosy? There it is. Oh, see me. So these yellow brick road socks, these are living in my little London bag. I made that a few years ago. I was going to London for my birthday and I thought I would take a nice bag with me. So it's got wee cakes hanging on here, a wee glass dome full of cakes from Chapel View Crafts. And it's got a wee birthday cake stitch marker. And I've got a wee hot dog on there as well. They're all Chapel View Crafts. And then I've got my wee, my wee Amsterdam house. I bought that when I was at the Stephen West, at Stephen West shop in Amsterdam. Just to check the... Make sure it's the right double pointed needles I'm using. Not that I normally have to check because they're all 2.25 for socks mostly. Right, I'm just going to pop this down here. Get those ones out of the way. Right, what else have I been working on? I'm going to put Kevin down in case I knock him over. Say bye Kevin. I'm really pleased with that wee foot. I looked online for a foot. I wanted a fake foot just for doing, for putting my socks on. And it came up, they were actually real looking feet. I think it was, I don't know what it was for. He keeps falling over. I've put him in the floor so he doesn't fall over and he just keeps falling over. Just sit over there. I 
I was looking for a foot for taking sock photos on. I thought that would have been a nicer way to display your socks. And but I looked online at first and they were actually real looking feet and I don't like feet so they kind of creeped me out a wee bit but then I kept looking and I found that one so quite pleased with that it's a nice way to show off your socks right, other socks that I've been working on these ones here, I got these finished I haven't blocked these yet, I've just popped them onto some sock blockers but these ones are for my husband these are just my squish toe up sock that um, toe up and it's a traditional heel flap and gusset I was just trying out my pattern before I send it out to be tested the only thing I did different when I got onto the leg it's a knit three purl one rib all the way up my husband likes ribbed legs on his socks ribbed legs on his socks sorry so those ones I've got a ribbed leg all the way up and these again were knit on 2.25mm needles but it was the knit pro zings I used for those ones and the colourway is, it's just a regia yarn, regia mosaic colour and that is 05563 and I didn't have much of that left, I just kept knitting until I ran out of yarn there's only a totally wee bit left in there which is a good thing about doing toe up socks, you can make, you can, then you can just keep going up the leg until you're, you run out of yarn or the long enough way is when you do them from the top down sometimes you worry am I, am I going to have enough if I make the leg too long am I going to have enough yarn here so it's always a benefit to doing the doing them toe up isn't it right I'll pop these out of the way now throwing everything down here in a basket onto the floor right I'll show you all the socks first this is socks that I'm planning for May I'm trying to remember what month it is next month what month is tomorrow actually that's scary this is glendale fibers and this is going to be my may socks i've been taking part in the rainbow sock chronicles but i've not actually been posting things to say that i've finished anything because i feel like i'm always late with stuff or last month i did shorty socks so they wouldn't count but i should really still post them on instagram shouldn't I? and let people see what i've been working on but this is for um me how do you think about that again um, this is this colourway is sage and it's the soft sock colourway from Glendale Fibres this is not a colourway she has in her shop but I had a wee mini skein of it I think she must have been experimenting last year she had some minis and I had a mini and it was beautiful so she does a dyed to order on Etsy you can you can do the dyed to order from her so I asked her to do me a full skein in that colourway because I love it I think it's really really nice so that is going to be my May socks nice isn't it and the other socks that I've been working on, they're in my little, look at this bag, how awesome is this bag? It glows in the dark as well and it's got a see-through bottom so you can see what you're hiding inside Now I've only just started this one, this is a West Green Loft Yarns colourway and it's called Ashes of Roses I'll show you the ball, look how lovely that is isn't that a lovely shade of pink? Can you tell I had to frog a wee bit? I've got all this. But I love that shade of pink. And here we go. I've not long started this. And this is another set of new needles that I'm trying out. These are the Chaigu. Chaigu? Chaigu? And it's just a little a little heart on them. I knitted these before. Oh, here they are. Excuse me. Oh, they're still attached because I'm going to frog them. They're still attached to the, the yarn. But I knitted these before with love hearts on them. But the yarn and the heart, the pattern was competing too much. So I'm trying it again on a self-coloured yarn. So that's it there. Just one little heart done so far. But I'm liking this so far and I love this colourway so hopefully I'll have more of these knitted before next month and I can show you how I'm getting on with those oh I'm in a fanco there we go but I'm knitting these ones with the chow goo did I keep the packet? no I've not got the packet oh there it is, there it is I've kept the wee packets so because these all these new needles that I'm trying out I'll end up forgetting which one's which but again just the 2.25 and they're quite nice to knit with too 
every time I watch other vlogs and podcasts, I see people knitting with different needles and, and I think, oh, I would like to try those. So I'm experimenting. Right, I'm just going to pop this one away. This one's got a wee unicorn DPN cosy as well. I made that one myself too. You're going to see this fabric later on. A wee bit more of that. Oh, I've caught my yarn up in here. Right, so there we go. That was that wee bag. Maybe I should do a tutorial on how I come up with this bag pattern. And you could have a go at making that yourself. Mm. I've been tidying out my room, my craft room a wee bit. Um, and I had a lot of socks lying about that were in various... They'd been, I'd finished knitting them, but maybe they'd been blocked, but they still needed ends sewn in. Or they still needed to be blocked. So I've been trying to sort my piles of socks out. And I've actually got a box here. I found the box as I was cleaning out my room and I thought that would be perfect for all my socks. It's one of the Kirsty All Sock boxes. Tesco's were selling them a while ago. I don't think they sell them anymore. But it's got a wee Dresden on it as well. Which is perfect for me. And the colours as well, kind of the pinks and the duck egg blue. And So anyway, I thought I would tidy up all the socks that I had lying, lying about. I would get them all blocked, get all the ends sewn in. And I've popped them in this wee box. So there we go. This is all the socks that I knitted and designed last year. So I've got my old shale ones here. I've got the plain grey, the rainbow, and I've got the shorty ones. And then that's Helter Skelter, and I've got shorty Helter Skelters too. I've got my steel ach socks down here. Fanko socks. Chevron socks. I've got two pairs because I've got the original pair in the birthday colourway. And I've got the Christmas, the Advent Christmas colourway. Now they're both from the Cozy Knitter. These ones here are are, the most of these are drops, drops yarns. That one is down Sheepy Lane and that one's by Jane from Mouse Knits and Crafts. And then we've got the Candy Cane ones, Feather and Fan, Feather and Fan Rainbow, and that was just my multicoloured sock. That's for a tutorial that I've got coming up soon. So they just look really pretty all lying in the box, don't they? I probably should be using them because they were last year's socks and I know people do that, they put their socks into a box and they gift them to themselves at the end of the year but I just thought I'm going to put them all in there, they're just finished and I'm going to put them all in a box together and then that's not all my socks by the way that I knitted last year because the ones that I knitted for either my husband or my daughter or my daughter's boyfriend got paid as well so it's not all the socks that I knitted but I think I've got how many pairs did I actually have in there? 13 socks in there that's my lucky number, by the way. That was really nice. 13 socks for me. And this box here, this has just got the other socks that I found lying about. So this is the ones that I've knitted this year. Well, most of them are the ones I knitted last, this year. These ones I didn't knit this year. I knitted these two years ago, but that's me just finally sewn in the ends. I'm terrible, aren't I? And I've got my, my squish socks in here which we will come to just shortly because I'm going to put out a wee request for those and this, oh, these ones I wanted to share with you these were actually really nice socks to knit so these socks here are actually the how I roll sock pattern mine's is just a wee miniature when I print out patterns I tend to do two sheets to a page I4 so they're always a wee bit smaller but this is the how I roll pattern by Orange Knits She's orange knits on Ravelry. I think she's got another. She's got quite a few sock patterns actually, but the other popular one is the Rose City Rollers, which is very similar to this. And she tells you how to stripe. So this was three 20 gram mini skeins that I had. This one obviously I started with purple and then went down into grey and then changed it to pink. And she tells you how many stripes to work in each colour, how you can work it out. So it, it blends from one, fades from one end to the other. These were actually mini skeins that I bought. It was a set of eight because um, I've knitted these socks before. This is the other pair that I've got. Get me that way. I, bet I have worn these ones already. It was a set of eight mini skeins and um, they were Evie, Evolutions colourways. So these ones are Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon. I'm a Pokemon fan. And Eevee's one of my favourites. 
So that, that was the 320 gram schemes that made up that one. And these ones are actually, it's Espion, Umbreon and Sylveon. And I've still got two left. I've still got these ones. This is Leafeon and Glaceon. But it's a shame you didn't get a wee, maybe a, an original Eevee colourway. Because then I could have mixed it in with this one and had another wee shorty pair of socks. So I might look out for a wee kind of beige brownie coloured so it looks like Eevee. And I'll blend those in to make another wee pair of shorties. Because I really like shorty socks at this time of the year. The next thing I've got is a wee request for test nettles. Scoosh socks cuff down and squish socks toe up. I would like to get these test knitted in May, both of them. So if you would like to test knit either one of these, they've both got the traditional heel flapping gusset and the, oh, the pattern will have three sizes. So this one is cuff down and this one is toe up. So this one, I'm going to run a test knit for this. I'm going to start this at the beginning of May. So if you would like to do this one, let me know. I'll put, a wee, I'll put a wee thread on Ravelry and I'll put a wee link below in the description box linking it to Ravelry so you can find it. And then this one will kick off at the middle of me. Now see if you're feeling adventurous, you could take part in both of them and you could do one sock down the way and then in the second part of the month you could do one sock up the way. Because they're going to match, they're going to look the same. So let me know if you would like to test knit those for me and as I say there'll be details below in the description link it to Ravelry to tell you how to contact me. It'll be it'll be through email, so if you've got my email address, you could just email me directly and just let me know that you want to take part in this. You don't have to do both. If you only want to do the cuff down one, that's fine. Or if you prefer to only do a toe up, that's fine. But if you want to experiment and do one each, you can do that too. The other test knit that I would like to kick off is this shawl here. I've had this shawl designed for a while, but I would like to get it test knitted before I release it. Um, I'll see if I can turn around so you can see the back. Um, this is my Happy Holidays shawl. And this back piece here, I've showed you this before on my vlog, haven't I? This is snow falling down onto rooftops and it's got a nice frilled edge and it's candy canes in this section here. And it opens up like this. Now I used 150 grams to knit this one. Um, Harley, there's my little cast on. That's what we had cast on at the centre. And there's what I had left when I cast off. Played yarn chicken and I won. But this skein was from Fibre Space. This was quite some time ago I bought this. And it, it was a 150 gram skein of yarn. So you would need two skeins of yarn because I don't think there's many dyers that dye 150 gram skeins of yarn. You're going to need two skeins of sock yarn if you want to do that. And I'm looking for test knitters that can knit this in June. So if you've got stuff on your needles just now or if you want to take part in the sock test knit, it's, that's fine because this one, I'll kick this one off in June, okay? This is my Summer Bloom shawl. And I'm going to put a wee discount code on Ravelry for this. So if anybody's interested in knitting this one for the summertime, there'll be a discount code on Ravelry. But this one's really nice. You can just wrap it around like that. Keeps your neck warm. And these long tails come around the front. And you can tuck them in your jacket. Or... You can just have it around your shoulders. Although it's called Summer Blooms, you can wear it at whatever time of the year you like. There we go. But see, when I designed this shawl, there's a lot of bobbles in it. And normally when I knit and I come to a bobble, I replace it with a bead. It's just how I am. Nups and beads, nups and bobbles, I don't like knitting them. And I normally replace them for beads. So when I was knitting this one, um, it was quite daunting because I don't like... like the reason I don't like bobbles is they don't always end up even. It annoys me because I like my bobbles to look all the same. But these ones actually worked out quite well. This is another fibre space yarn and it was lovely to knit with. It really was. And it's a nice sunflowery colour, just perfect for those wee flowers, isn't it? Right. Let's move on to other knitting. I'm just going to leave her sitting there like that while I show you the rest of the knitting section, okay? So this is my 
hexagons that I've been working on for my hexagon blanket. This is the Rainbow Chronicle yarn from Kelly and Nick at Lee Family Yarns. And I've struggled a wee bit with this month, to be honest. Um, the first four hexagons that I knitted, I ran out of yarn. You cast on... You cast on all outside and then you start to work in the round and you decrease till you get into the centre. And I ran out of yarn before I got to the centre. I didn't want to change it and have a... I know I could have joined in another colour and have a tiny wee bit in the centre that was a slightly different colour, but I didn't want to do that. And four times it happened, once or twice, but four times. And I've actually found that I had to... I mean, there's nothing wrong with the yarn. The yarn is all over 10 grams, but I'm finding it takes me 10 and a half grams to knit a hexagon. And I was really lucky with the first three months. And all of those skeins were over 10 and a half. They were, they were very generous. But some of these ones are maybe 10.2 or 10.3. And that's why I'm running out of yarn. So I've had to mix them up with some of the other ones that I've had. You know, the 20 gram skeins. Because it's double knitting this pattern. And I have struggled a wee bit. But I was worried as well that because I was mixing the mini skeins, the, the 10 gram ones with the 20s, I wouldn't have a good contrast in the colours, but I think they're going to be fine. They'll be okay. But I've got four more of these to do. I've still got a couple more in my basket here. These four here have to be one strand each. Those two will go together, those two. Oh. So it's two strands of four ply to make it double knitting. And I'm using 375, the Nipro carbons for that. So I need to get my finger out and get that finished because this is the end of April and I've not got them finished. Usually I've got them finished and all sewn up and blocked by this point. But I need to get a jildy on and get that done, don't I? Yep. The finished ones are usually my yarn lives in here, but I've got my finished hexagons living in my wee bowl this time. This is, um, it was macrame cord. I couldn't get that word out last time. It was that stuff for making macrame. Macrame cord I used to make this with a wee bit of liberty. I've actually made a plant hanger with this. I'll need to show you that before I go. I really need to remember. But I've been looking for wee tags to put over here that just say handmade or whatever. I don't have my own wee logo. But I couldn't find... See the ones that you find that some of the sellers are selling? I, I think they're for the bottom of a hat. So they would have been upside down on here. Got a wee bit of ribbon with my Shutter Monkey logo on. And um, just, I stitched it onto Liberty and then put that in place. So just to cover up where that yarn fold, where that macrame cord folds back and gets stitched down. Quite pleased with that. But I'll get those hexagons finished. I'll just need to concentrate and get it done. Right. The other piece of knitting I'm going to show you is in this basket here. This is a long standing whip. Now, I don't know how well you're going to see this because I've got another wee moan. I've always got a moan, haven't I? Right. Maybe. Nope, that's, that's one of the fronts. I started this in 2016. A knitting friend gave me this yarn. She was moving house and cleaning out her, her knitting. She had a shed in her garden for knitting in. And she was cleaning out her shed and I inherited some yarn from her. Oop. Now, let me get a full ball here so I can show you the yarn. Right, I've pulled a wee bit out of the bottom to see how it looked. It's Sudda Soft Spun. And she, I think I got maybe about eight balls from this friend and I needed a couple more. I found a cardigan pattern that I really, really liked. And I thought I'm going to try knitting that, but I didn't have enough yarn, so I had to buy another three balls. Now, I kept them separate, the new yarn that I bought and the, the yarn that I had from my friend. But when I started knitting, you can see where it changes. So that was one ball, changed onto the second ball. I wasn't sure how well you would see that on here, but you can. This one's thinner and this one's thicker and fluffier, and it makes it look as well like the colours change, and even though it's not. So... It put me off knitting it and I popped it away. So some time passed and I thought I'm going to try that again. So I started the back again and again the same thing happened. You can see where it changes. It's not so noticeable on this one actually. So that was two, twice I started the back and twice that happened and I gave up and I threw it in the corner. But I've looked it out again 
because I've been looking through all my whips and seeing what I've got, but I'll talk to you about that later. Um, and even though I'd separated, they were, they were the same dye lots, the stuff I got from my friend and this, the extra stuff that I bought, they were the same dye lots. But, and I did keep them separate, but that was, the first bag I knitted with the stuff I got from my friend and the second bag was the stuff that I bought online. But it just seems to be that some of them, some of the balls are slightly thinner than the others. And you know something, it dawned on me the other night when I was knitting it, I bet she I wash it and it all looks the same. Maybe the thinner stuff will just bloom, just fluff up a wee bit and it'll be, all, it'll be fine in the end up. But I've tried to separate the thin stuff so you can see that one I've wrote thin on it. And I've tried to separate them so I have got one front done now and I'm on the second front. So... One piece done and I managed to match up yarns and I've started the second front as well. And what I'll do is I'll try and keep all the nice fluffy stuff for the fronts. I'll re the back using the finer stuff because that's not so bad if that's on the back. And then I'll see what I've got left for the sleeves. But even if I have to make the, sh the sleeves shorter that'll be fine because there's actually a waistcoat version there as well. But I really really like this cardigan. And you know what, see even if it does have some, you can notice it even after washing and blocking, I can still wear it in the house, can't I? Still wear it with my pyjama bottoms, I feel like that's what I've been living in during lockdown, pyjama bottoms and a cardigan like that would be just fine, wouldn't it? I know this, this being allowed to go out and about a wee bit more, you haven't got and actually get properly dressed is murder, isn't it? The, at the beginning of April, a lot of yarn dyers on Instagram were launching their advent calendars. I know it's quite early for advent calendars, but it gives you the chance to pay up over the year and they're a wee bit cheaper. So it got me thinking that I've got quite a lot of sock leftovers. So I was thinking I would wind up some of my leftovers into little 10 gram minis and I'll use them as a giveaway. So these, this one here is from my candy cane socks. This was my January socks, the string of hearts. This one was my um, March socks. I've not knitted the February ones, I'm redoing them just now because I didn't like the colourway. But this was my March socks. That was a little Taylor S yarn. And this is the original Yellow Brick Road that I knitted from Felt Fusion. But I'm going to have some leftovers from the second Yellow Brick Road, so I'll put them in as well. So there will be a minimum of 12 mini skeins in here. And what you're going to know what the yarn is, you're not going to get a surprise. But I thought we'd put them in a wee box with some stitch markers and some sweeties and run it as a giveaway. So the only thing is I could put some of this in when I frog this. But the only thing with that is it's going to have been knitted and unwound and maybe washed or steamed to get the creases out. So I'm not too keen on putting that in. I might put some in if I've got some left, but it'll be a wee extra, okay? So... Every month through the socks that I've knitted, that's why I put that in and it's placed the leftovers from the candy cane socks just now. So I've actually got two of these. So I'm going to run two wee giveaways. And it'll be two advent calendars. There'll be 12 10 gram minis in it. So I'll run it as a giveaway. So what I think I'll do, I know for the first one, we'll launch the first one just now. So if you've ever knitted any of my sock patterns, what to do is from now onwards, if you're going to, now I've got lots of free sock patterns so it doesn't cost you anything and a lot of my patterns that I knitted last year were drops fable so it's not, they're not expensive yarns. You could knit it in, if you've got acrylic at home, knit your socks with acrylic, it's, it'll be fine, it's your socks. They might not wear very well underneath your boots but if you're like me and you just wear your socks at home they'll be fine. So if you knit one of my sock patterns, what I want you to do if you're on Instagram, Tag me with Shutter Monkey Advent, okay? And I will draw somebody from that at the end of the year and you can enter as many times as you like. So if you knit seven pair of socks, you're going to have seven entries, okay? And I'll give this away at the end of the year, but I'll need to think of other wee things to put in to make it more fun because you're going to know the yarn that you're getting. I'll think of something else to pop in there as well so you're getting a wee surprise too. And I'll think of what to do with these ones because it's not fair that only sock knitters get it. So, if you've knitted any of my patterns, even if you knit a shawl pattern, tag me in it. Tag me on Instagram, Shutter Monkey Advent, and I'm going to kick that off tomorrow, the 1st of May. But I'll be adding more mini skeins to this as the year goes on, from all my, my leftover socks. Somebody left me a comment on YouTube. I think it was, I think it might have been Julie. 
And she told me about the crazy sock lady. I'd never heard of the crazy sock lady before. And she was, it was when I was struggling with my cross stitch, trying to do a bit of cross stitch every day. And Julie had said that the crazy sock lady had recommended you just do 30 minutes a day and then put it away on something that you're working on. And I think that's what made me actually start timing how long it took to make my socks. After that, that comment, I thought, I wonder how long it does take me to knit socks. So I've started looking, I've started watching this, the Crazy Sock Ladies podcast and I'm really, really enjoying it, obviously, because I knit a lot of socks myself. But um, she's running a summer sock camp and there's two things that I would like to do during our summer sock camp and one of them is to crochet some socks. So I found this pattern. Now this was, it's Kristen Ten Dyke, Fancy Footwork it's called. This was in Simply Crochet, sorry I'm just going to check, make sure I'm giving you the right crochet magazine. Yep, Simply Crochet. Now it was last month's issue. I found this pattern on Ravelry in a real, when I was looking for crochet sock patterns and I thought I really like that pattern but it was in the magazine and I couldn't buy the magazine because it was last month's issue but I found them on eBay. Somebody had taken out the magazine and was just selling the sock pattern, so I'm going to try those during the summer sock camp. And the other thing that I would really like to try is doing two socks at a time. I tried it once and I really didn't like it. Um, but I took, I split the two socks up and, and started using it. It was these wee circulars here that I was using. It was the Knit Pro ones, 40 centimetre length. But... I, t I took one sock off and just used the circulars to finish the first sock that I had on still and I real it's these needles, I didn't like these needles it wasn't that I didn't like knitting two at a time socks it was these needles that I didn't like I think the needle length, they're only this length and they're quite short and I didn't enjoy that, I want a longer, I want a longer needle on my cord so I think I'm going to try that again but buy longer needles so see if you want these, you can have them. There's two there, 40 centimetre length, but they are wooden, they're knit pro. It's the 40 cent they're 40 centimetres long, including the cord, including the needles, sorry. The cord and the needles are 40 centimetres long and they were the perfect length just for doing the socks, but the actual needle itself isn't long enough for me. I didn't like it, but you might like it. So leave me a wee comment and I'll randomly pick somebody and I'll post them out to you because they're no good to me. They're actually two and a half millimetre, but they're not two two fives, they're two and a halves. But if you want to try those, if you would like to try two at a time socks, let me know and I'll pick somebody randomly to, to get those needles. Right, I'm definitely finished. Definitely finished with all the knitting stuff. I've swapped all my stuff about and now I'm ready to move on to the crochet section. Right, here's my dolly. She's still not finished. I need to talk to you about my whips. I'll do that right at the end because I've got quite a few whips I need to show you. Well, talk to you about. But her hair's finished, and isn't her hair just gorgeous? She's just got a wee, one of those wee like safety pin plastic clips to hold her fringe off her, to hold, to hold all her hair off her face. But I just need to block her dress now and get her gems on, make her a crown, and she's done. Doing that hair takes quite a wee bit of time. I think I'm six and a half hours just doing her hair. I've only been doing it an hour, every, I was supposed to do an hour a day but I kept leaving it aside and going on to other things. But her hair's done now and I'm really happy with her hair. But I do have another dolly that's part way through and I started, rather than working on, rather than working on her hair, I started working on her hair. Go figure. I, but here we go, she's still joined on. It's one of those wee clips here that I've got in the other dolly, a wee blue one, just to hold her hair off her face. But this is my princess doll. And she, I made her a couple of years ago. She's been waiting for hair. Let's see if I can get that stand off her. So her hair's longer and it's slightly less curly as well. The, the Snow Queen one, it was, and it, you crochet, it's double crochet all the way, you crochet a chain and then you double crochet all the way back up and what I did for this one was I did two into one, two double crochet into one stitch and then a double crochet four, two into the next stitch, double crochet four. But this one I've did two into a stitch and then double crochet six so there's a bigger gap between doing two into the one. So she's got long and she's also got a longer chain to start with as well. So she'll have longer here 
And what I'm doing with her is I'm only doing one strand a day. And then it's, it doesn't feel like such a big task sitting there crocheting these strands of hair, doing it for an hour a day, only one a day. But in order to start doing her hair, I had to finish my nutcracker because the mushroom, the, the mushroom colourway that I needed to finish her hair was tied up with my, my nutcracker. I think I showed you him before around about Christmas and he was looking like those 118 guys. Well, I think he's changed now. I think he looks like Billy Connolly. So he's another doll that I need to finish, but I'm going to finish my Snow Queen. I'm going to finish my Princess and then we'll get back to the Nutcracker. But do you remember last time? I think I told you that I make my arms shorter. There's an arm there. That's the original arms there and that's where they hang down to. And that's why I shorten mine because I just feel like they're a wee bit long. I, I think for dollies they're fine, but... I want them to look more like people, so my arms don't hang all the way down there, so that's why I shorten my arms. But when I made this one, she had the longer arms and it annoyed me. And you know sometimes if you, when you knit something, you can actually, like when you do afterthought heels, you can pick up your stitches and you can, you can cut your yarn and take it out and you can just recast it. I tried to do that with the crochet, but it doesn't work, so I had to make her new arms. But I was working on her outside the other day and she didn't have any pants or shoes so I've also made her pants, I've made her shoes, her dress is already done, she's got her dress there all ready to go once her hair's done and it's got wee buttons up the back. I find the toft patterns for the clothes are actually quite tight and I can't get them on and off my, my dollies so I tend to work back and forward and put buttons down the back rather than keep them going in the rounds because I can't get them on and off my dolls. I think it's because I overstuff actually. And the other thing I do that when I make my toft do dollies and my toft toys, I uh, use a three millimetre hook. But when I make clothes, I use a three and a half millimetre. So my clothes are slightly bigger, but I still can't get them on and off my dollies because I stuff them too much. But that's her. That's how she's looking so far. So one strand a day and I'll get her done hopefully pretty soon. But she, the, the princess one, is in this book here. And this is a lovely book. It's a flip book. So you can change. You can change. I'll just try and show you. You can change the heads and you can swap heads and swap the bodies at the bottom. And But there's quite a few different costumes in here and it's all a flip book. So it's really, really nice. That one yeah. just in case you didn't see that I moved it too quick. Right, so as well as working on the Snow Queen, trying to do her hair, then jumping over and saying, oh, let's do the princess and do one strand a day. Oh, I'm going to have to finish the Nutcracker's head so I can get my mushroom yarn back. I also thought I would work in this Toft project that's in here. This is a wee bag that I made myself. It's Kath Kidston. That one's Kath Kidston fabric. It's wild strawberry. I love that fabric. And this fabric down here, that's a Clark and Clark. They're, they're an upholstery, kind of upholstery weight fabric. That's what I'm trying to say. Because this is a cotton duck and that's kind of, that's a, an upholstery weight as well. It's a wee bit heavier weight than your regular quilting fabric. But, and it's got Laura Ashley inside. Get some Laura Ashley wee birdies in there. You'll see more of that soon too. I like this fabric. But as well as working on those dollies, I decided to look out my axolotl. Now she was only to here, she didn't have a head. So she doesn't actually look like an axolotl, does she? She looks like a tadpole. I've just got this wee stitch marker on here to remind me what's the bottom so I know what side to put my legs on. But she's got to get wee legs and she's got big gills that go along the side. I don't know if you'll be able to see that okay. But that's how she should look. And she'll have wee legs down here too. Quite like ax axolotls. They're quite interesting, we, we creatures. When I went to Berlin about three, four years ago, they've got a really nice zoo with pandas. There's pandas in that zoo. But they also had a nice aquarium. It's part of the zoo. And when I was in there, I actually saw an axolotl. And it's the only time I've ever seen one. And they had they had the regular colourway and they had these albino ones too. So I got to see one of them, except I never got to see her front on because she was like this the whole time sleeping. And I went back two or three times and she wouldn't turn round. Or he, sorry. It wouldn't turn round and look at me, so I've only got pictures of it from the back. 
but it's the one time I've ever seen an axolotl in real life. But this is one of my many whips. And I'll talk to you about my whips in a wee bit. This is going to be a long episode, isn't it? And the only other thing that I need to work on and get finished is this. This is Jane, the pangolin. I made this last year when we went into lockdown. Now she was quite an interesting we make because you make her body, you make her legs and the head the same way as you do with most of the toft, the toft toys. Sew it all together and then you make this bit of the back with the shell pattern on it. So this is her armour and then you stitch it into place and it's got the tail attached. Now all I need to do to finish this is stitch some eyes on and she'll be finished. And she's been sitting for a year as a whip just waiting for eyes. So I need to get that finished. So see when our next vlog, she'll have eyes. We'll see. And I think that's all I've got to show you crochet wise. That's all. It's just mostly my toff stuff I've been crocheting. I haven't done any more to my, my hexagons. That's I'll do that later on. Um, try and get some of these toys finished because my crochet whip list is the biggest whip list that I've got. I'm all swapped about again and ready to move on to the patchwork and quilting section. Now, first up, pin cushions. I've got my tutorial published on YouTube, how to make your own little cathedral windows pin cushion. This one glows in the dark. It's part of this fabric range here. This is um, Fairy, Fairy Lights, it's called. It's from um, Lewis and Irene. Had to think about that there. But it's a really nice fabric range. They've actually got a slightly different version as well called Fairy Nights. It's, it looks like it's night time and there's lots of toadstools in that one as well. They've got lots of lovely fabric. But that's, that's on YouTube now. And the only other thing you can maybe do if you wanted to is you could put, you could actually, see once you hand stitch it, you could put another wee triangle in the back if you want your pin cushion double sided. But I've just left mine single sided. And I never thought when I put the unicorn in there, I can't stick pins in the middle. I don't want to stick them in my unicorn. So, there we go. Go make yourself a nice little pin cushion. Quite, you wouldn't actually need a sewing machine either. You could, do it, you could do it all by hand if you wanted. You don't need a sewing machine to make them. They could all be hand stitched. Some people like to sit and hand stitch, don't they? Rather than on the sewing machine all the time. And next up, this quilt here. I've been working in this. I've actually got all of this done. I think I finished it about two weeks ago. I put a picture on Instagram, it all finished lying out in my patio. Had to wait for a dry day. But I've got all the blocks finished. They're all in there. I'll not drag them all out. You've seen, you've, I've showed you these before. But I've got all the coloured bit done. And now I need to start working on the exterior. This, um, the black and grey bit. But this is Jaybird Quilts, this pattern, Gravity. This is quite an old pattern. It's been out for a while. I think she's got a new one. Is it Nebula? Maybe Trip to Nebula? But that's a quilt along that's happening just now. She's actually just given birth to her second baby. And she's been putting lots of pictures on Instagram. That's one thing I do like on Instagram, seeing pictures like that. Happy baby pictures are cute. So I have to now work around the outside of that Gravity quilt when it's all the blacks and the greys. And I've got them all cut out, ready to go. So I can start sewing these together, maybe do a wee bit of time. Going from the black to the light silver, there's six different colours here. And it took me four hours to cut all this out. But as well as cutting out this bundle, I've been cutting out the smaller ones as well. That's not in the pattern, by the way. I'm just doing half sizes of everything. And I'm going to make two matching pillowcases. So I've done the same with all the coloured diamonds. So I've got this here to sew together as well. There was only one colour I ran out on. I'm 10 diamonds short, but I might not need it all because it's going to be... Remember, if it's pillowcases, you might not need... You might need the width, but you might not need the full height, if you know what I mean, because you don't need squares or half. I know it's rectangles and you would chop it in half, but it's going to be slight. It's not going to be totally a lot of square cut in half. So the miniature quilt, I may need to adjust anyway to make the two pillowcase sizes. I think that's what I'm trying to say, pillowcase sizes. Right. I better not drop these or mix these up because two of those colours are quite close. That one and this one are quite close in colour and I'll end up sewing them together wrong so I don't want to drop that. And the only other thing that I made was I've got these wee trays. Let's see if I'm going out in the garden or even sometimes in the house. I've got a wee white one and I bought this wee pink one and I wanted a wee liner for it. 
and I've been using my tea time treat mats in them but sometimes they slide about because they're not the exact size so I made one of these now this is just this is just, this is Laura Ashley fabric that's this fabric that's in that bag there this was actually the last time I, I taught a class over a year ago now um, was the rainbow sampler and I made a second one I had to make the rainbow sampler to let everybody see what it looked like before they came to class but as the ladies at class were making their quilts I was making a second one using Laura Ashley fabrics and this was the one of the sample Dresdens because I was trying to show them that you don't need a, cent a Dresden right in the centre of your block you could have four pieces and you could have had them round each side if you didn't want a Dresden right in the centre you could have four quarters so this was left over from that class and so is the grey bit as well and I thought you know what that would be perfect for a wee tray a wee tray liner and it's just more of that Laura Ashley fabric on the back it was actually a fat quarter bundle with this I bought I was in Laura Ashley in Glasgow one day and they had this fabric and they had two bundles of it and it was reduced I think it was £8 it was reduced to for the two bundles so I just bought the two of them and it's, it just seems to be lasting forever because I've made a quilt with it I've made this, I've put it into that notebook cover that I made, the quilted notebook cover I've put it into my tea time treat mat I've used it as linings and it just keeps going on and on I swear sometimes that the scraps actually multiply in the bag I think they do so there we go, that'll sit in there and it'll slide a bit a wee bit but it's not going to be as much as my tea time treat mat and that's the only things that I've been sewing up this month the only other sewing related things I've got to show you is some things that I've been putting into my Etsy shop I make so many things for classes and for teaching workshops that I don't, there's just no way I'm going to use it all so I thought I would put it onto um, my Etsy shop so this is one of the things that's on I've put the little cushion on I've taken photographs of it with the with a cushion pad inside but I won't post it with a cushion pad I'll let you buy your own because it'll be cheaper postage if you just buy the cover so that's my little rail fence cushion and there's also a matching quilt now the quilt is only 39 inches squared it's just a lap quilt you've seen this before I've showed you this before but I've washed them all and I've given them a press and they're ready to go now see if you like that crinkled look to your quilts you could rewash them because see when I washed these and dried them they all crinkled up and I know a lot of people like that lived in look they like the crinkled look in their quilts I don't I spend a lot of time flattening this out before I quilt it I want it flat so but if you prefer that crinkly look give it a wash and it'll crinkle up just fine because it did and I had to press it to get all the crinkles out so what I've done, they're on my Etsy shop, but what I've tried, I, I never know how much to charge for things so what I've done is, I looked, I did this as a quilt along and I looked out my fabric requirements so I worked out how much it would be if you wanted to make one of these yourself so if you had to buy the fabric and you had to buy your wadding and I added up what that would be and that's how much I'm charging for them on Etsy, okay? so it's actually quite a good buy, it would save you making it yourself not charging for time or effort or anything like that just for what the fabrics would cost if you went to buy them and the other cushion that I've got on is this one, this is an attic windows this is down by the river this fabric is called, it's by Lewis and Irene and it's a lovely border print and at the class we just cut it up to make this attic window pattern but I've got a mini quilt like this and I've also got a large quilt like that as well that we entered into a competition my craft group entered into a competition one year in a magazine we got third place I'm not sure, there might only have been three entries but we still got third place and the back is just patchwork pieces of the same fabric range inside is quite funky actually because I used leftover bits of fabric or fat quarters that I knew I would never use I don't know why I ever bought fabric with football print on it but I did at some point and there's also some rainbow but you're never going to see the inside anyway but it is three layers, this one's all three layers quilted back and front whereas this wee one is only quilted in the front and the back is just one layer of fabric, okay? 
So I thought I would just show you those. I'm going to be cleaning out and putting some more stuff on on into my Etsy shop. See, just stuff that I've made for classes or made for workshops. And then maybe had to make a second one as well while you're at the class. So I end up sometimes with two or three th some things. When I taught a sew together bag at one point and I ended up with seven of those. I just get carried away with fabric choices and I made seven. I made four large size ones and three of the mini ones. I did give one to Helen, my friend Helen. My daughter took one and I actually put one on Etsy that's sold as well. So it's quite nice when you've got somewhere because I don't have a lot of friends and family to give stuff to. And most people that I do know are makers themselves, so they make a lot of stuff. So it's nice to find if, if this stuff can find a new home, it would be really great. Rather rather than it cluttering up my cupboards. One other thing, just while I remember. If you wanted to take this cathedral windows pattern, the pin cushion, and make yourself a cushion, you would just make lots more of them. This one was two squares at eight inches, but I've made cushions in the past and it was 10 inch squares I cut. So there we go. I hope there's no cat here or human hair, whatever over this, because these actually get used in my living room. I've got five of these. Um, but this was 16 10 inch squares and you just do the same as you would for this but you start joining them together you'll have rows of four and you put the three in then you'll have another row of four with the three and then if you zigzag those together you then put other wee squares at one point in the center so if you want to make yourself try and make yourself a cushion something bigger you can use that tutorial and just make more of them that was only eight inch squares and this one was 10 inch squares but you could do it with 8 inch squares you just end up with a smaller cushion this one's actually 20 inches it's quite a big cushion but I started making this and I was going to make a, a blanket and decided it was way too much work I'm only ever going to make a cushion taught a workshop so I had to make a second one for the workshop liked it so much and ended up making another three and there was me saying I was never going to make a blanket in this pattern made five cushions big enough for a blanket isn't it anyway let me just pop this down it's just black at the back it's just the minshan fabric from lewis and irene right the last thing that i'm going to share with you today is my whip lists so a couple of years ago i looked out all my projects and made up a whip list of everything i had also made up nesty lists that's things that you've bought all the materials for your path, you've got the pattern, but you've not even started it yet. That's what an SD is. Didn't count that this time, left that. But I had over 70 whips when I counted. I think it was at the end of 2018. And I've been working on my whips. I've frogged some. I've, I've stopped what I was doing because I've decided well, even if I finish it, I'm not going to use it. And I've got rid of a lot of stuff. And I thought I must be doing a lot better. I was watching the home edit on Netflix. I love those kinds of programmes and it's kind of got me geared into coming in and cleaning out my cupboards, rearranging stuff, seeing what I've actually got and sorting it all out. So I made new whip lists and I'm going to show you my knitting and my crochet ones. You may, I don't know if you can pause that and have a wee look at them. But if you colour code them it just makes them look so much better. So this is my knitting one. I've got 20 knitting whips and I've colour coded them going by socks, toys, decorations, blankets, garments and home accessories. And I've actually got a wee note down there about my Sanka gloves. I've not even started those yet. I keep missing the tutorials on, they're on Zoom, but because I'm not on Facebook a lot, I keep missing when the, the meetings are taking place. But they are, all up, they are all on YouTube, so I need to go catch up and that's what I'm going to do this weekend. I'm just going to work in my Sanka gloves because I haven't started them yet and I've got a wee note here about macrame I wanted to learn how to macrame it was more plant pot holders and I still have to show you that I'll need to go grab it before I finish up today so that's my knitting whip list and this is my crochet one my crochet one is the worst one I've got 29 crochet whips including things like Jane the pangolin where is she? Toft pangolin down there I only have to put eyes on her and she's finished she's off that whip list but I I've separated the toff then um, I've separated the crochet one into toff dolls, toff toys, other toys that I've been working on. 
garments, blankets and home accessories. And I just thought if I colour coded them it'll look a wee bit better. So what's that? 49 whips. And then I've also got the patchwork and quilting ones. I've only got 15 of those. So it's that 64 whips all together. And my gravity quilt's on there, so if I keep working on that and get that done, that can come off. And I split my quilts up, my patchwork and quilt and stuff. I've split up into quilts, wall hangings, cushions and bags. So there we go. I need to try and get some stuff finished actually and get it off my list. And that's why I've been cleaning out as well and find, see when you come across things like blankets and cushion covers that you've made for classes and you think, I'm never going to use these. I've got no one to give them to, so maybe I'll just stick them on it see if I can clear out some cupboard space. I did consider actually looking at all my whips and filming them, I might do that. And I also thought as well, to if I actually got big boxes, plastic boxes, and just put all my whips into boxes, whether it's um, knitting, crochet, patchwork stuff, it would give me so much more space in my room. Stick them in the garage till I'm ready to work on them, but I'm worried that beasties may get in. Spiders and things like that be crawling through my, my yarn and my fabric. Oh, we wouldn't like that. Anyway, I'm going to go grab that macrame thing to show you. Right, I'm back. And here it is. Oh, I've never made anything like this before, but it's something that I've wanted to do for a while. And this time last year, I didn't have any houseplants because I'm just not very good with houseplants. But during lockdown, I spent a lot of time in the garden. My garden had just been finished to get work done on it. And I've spent a lot of time in the garden growing seeds and just had a lot of fun. So when the summer was over, I started buying some house plants. And I think I showed you one last time and I have managed to keep them all alive. Nothing's died on me yet. So I need to get some plant holders. Now this one's pink because I've only got pink and grey macrame cord. So here we go. And there it is. I put this bowl in it. I've not got a plant in it yet because I wasn't sure that this knot would hold at the bottom. So it's been hanging like this just with a plant in because I've not been brave enough to put a plant in in case it all comes crashing down. And But it's held okay. It's been like this from, since last Saturday. My husband was pushing in the bowl and everything to make sure the knot didn't come out. And I'm like, oh, don't break my bowl. But it's been fine. So I think it's safe enough and get a plant in now. So I'll bring it down again a wee bit and let you see. Just a few knots, some strings, and then it's almost like a double helix, a DNA strand up here. That's why we picked this one. My daughter liked this one. She made one too, because she's she's got a lot of plants, but she's really good with her plants, unlike myself. So she picked this one because it reminded her of a double helix. So we made the same one. It's a tutorial on YouTube called from so soulful notions the the youtube channel's called but i'll link it below if it's something you're interested in because she's got some little love hearts that lie flat you could maybe use them as a, a placemat but i think i'm going to try that next but i bought this actually to put my succulents in i was in dobie's garden center just last week that's the only other place i've been to and they had a big huge bowl like this full of succulents and i thought i really like that so I bought a wee bowl and I've got three or four succulents so I might try and put them in here to see if I can keep them going. The other thing I would like to try is two or three tiered um, plant hangers. I don't know if I'm brave enough for that yet because I've got a few... Is it Trandiscantia you call them? Um, I've got a... I've got Fetonias and I've got Flumensis. And I've got an Anouk as well, and they're all trailing, so I thought they would be really nice in my plant hangers, just dotted about. But I'm actually going to have to find, ideally, places that I can hang a plant hanger, and they're going to get enough light. So that's something I need to look into, now that I know how to do these. But there's lots of tutorials on YouTube if that's something you're interested in. But, there we go. That's my little bit of excitement for the last weekend, making a, making a plant hanger. I think the tutorial actually tells you to use rope. But I had the macrame cord, so I just went with that, and it seems all secure so far, so I'll maybe try get the plant in. Hopefully it'll be okay. Anyway, that's all I've got to share with you today. It's been quite a long one today, hasn't it? I should maybe have told you at the beginning to go and get a wee cup of tea or something, shouldn't I? Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next month. Bye!